And then I get in the sauna, I dry brush and I get in the sauna. So I do my infrared sauna for 30 minutes. And then for dinner, I try to eat, you know, according to paleo. So lots of vegetables. It's really important for me to support my detox. Like, what are you trying to detox from? Air? Top comment on this video, Almond Mom Final Boss. <laughs> this comment has 64,000 likes. Let me introduce you guys to the ultimate final boss of all Almond Moms. The cult lead- oh, my bad. I meant wellness guru, Gwyneth Paltrow. This is Gwyneth and this is my first ASMR video. The only Gwen I stand is Gwen from Total Drama Island, so literally who? Everybody, it is me, Salem, and welcome back to <laughs> and welcome back to my Chanel. How are you guys doing? I hope you guys are doing okay. I hope you guys are doing good. I hope you guys are doing fun. I hope you guys are feeling festive because spring is finally here. And I swear to you guys, my seasonal depression just has completely melted away. I all of a sudden have this urge to just frolic in the meadows. I have this urge to just go in the middle of a random field and pull a Julie Andrews. The hills are alive with the sound of music. Oh my god, I sounded just like Beyonce. Oh my god. Beyonce, sweetie, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Beyonce, Beyonce. Girl. I just got a notification on my phone that the house I was looking at on Zillow got sold. I am heartbroken. I mean, yes, it was like $6 million, but I was still looking at it and I favorited it. Does anybody else do that or am I just alone in doing that? I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. I really want a house, but where I live, they are literally so expensive. The price will literally be like $600,000 for a 400 square foot Shrek house. And the owners will have the audacity to label it boho chic. No. <laughs> No. You know, sometimes I think a lot about like getting rich quick. You know, maybe sell feet pictures, sell my bath water, or maybe, just maybe, I can start a miniature cult of wellness, but label it a modern living brand where I sell completely useless items that don't do anything, but lie saying that they do, and overcharge the idiots that buy my stuff by a lot, such as a rainbow mat for $1,999, a jade egg for $66 or random supplements for $90. But hey, why stop there? I could also do beauty. I could sell a fix and restore balm for $125 or a dry skin kit for $303. And hey, that's a good deal because originally it was $433. And for the cherry on top, I need to name my company, you know, this masterpiece, something so unique and something eye-catching. Bloop. See, it's perfect. Wait. I can't do that. Wouldn't that be like scamming people? Plus, I'm pretty sure there's someone out there in the universe who already has done all of that. Let me introduce you guys to the face of wellness culture. The ultimate final boss of all almond moms. The cult lead. Oh, my bad. I meant wellness guru, Gwyneth Paltrow. This is Gwyneth, and this is my first. ASMR video. I don't think I need to introduce her at all. I'm sure those of you who clicked on this video already know what we're gonna be getting into today because it's a lot. But yes, today we are going to be talking about Gwyneth Paltrow and how she has made her way onto TikTok, which is crazy because not too long ago, I'm gonna say like maybe a year or a half ago, I made a video on Gwyneth Paltrow and her brand Goop, completely exposing them as were many creators at the time. And we all banded together to hope that we didn't have to see her products such as this candle making its way back into our capitalistic eye but it seems that we have all greatly failed for that to happen because Gwyneth Paltrow is back and she's goopier than ever 
Before we jump into this video, you guys know the drill. I gotta pay my bills. So here are today's sponsors. We have two sponsors for today's video. You know, mama's gotta get that bag. First sponsor is Kudos. If you shop online, you probably use an app to find the best coupons, but you should know that when you use Kudos, you get the most cash back. Kudos is a free shopping extension that not only helps you pick the best card to use at checkout, but also doubles your rewards on over 15,000 sites. That means if you're going to Sephora or Me Undies or even HelloFresh, if you usually get 3% back, you will now earn 6% back with Kudos, which is basically free money. And who doesn't like free money? I personally love using Kudos because it's super easy to use and you guys know that I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. This is really a no-brainer. Kudos has saved the average user over $750 per year. So imagine all the things you could get with that. So don't wait, use code Salem to double your rewards and get kudos for free by going to joinkudos.com slash Salem. That's joinkudos.com slash Salem. So they know that I personally sent you. Remember, that's joinkudos.com slash Salem. All right, that is one ad read out of the way. Let's go on to the second. Hey, do you wanna smell better in general, literally everywhere? Because look, let's face it, our underarms aren't the only place where we smell weird. The Lumi Whole Body Deodorant for Pits, Privates, and Beyond. A uniquely formulated pH balanced deodorant that's aluminum free, skin safe, and clinically proven to control odor for up to 72 hours. I go to the gym every single morning. So you guys know that coming out of the gym, I don't smell the best, but ever since using Lumi absolutely everywhere, I can actually get out of the gym and run some errands without disturbing the people around me. Lumi's starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube, deodorant, two free products of your choice. New customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with code SALEM at lumideodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit lumideodorant.com and use code SALEM. Remember, L-U-M-E deodorant.com and use code Salem. All right, let's get into this video. Who is Gwyneth Paltrow? What is happening? Why should I care? Well, I'll tell you exactly the answers to um, all of those things right now. This is Gwyneth. Gwen. The only Gwen I stand is Gwen from Total Drama Island. So literally who? You guys probably recognize her face because Gwyneth is actually super duper famous. Gwyneth Kate Paltrow is an American actress and businesswoman. She is the recipient of various accolades, including an Academy Award, a Golden Globe Award, and a Primetime Emmy Award. Paltrow gained notice for her early work in films such as Seven, Emma, sliding doors, and a perfect murder. But now she is most known for something completely different, which is her $250 million worth of company, Goop. According to the Goop website, in 2008, Gwyneth Paltrow launched Goop from her kitchen as a homespun weekly newsletter, which includes all things wellness, such as skincare, vitamins, and again, this candle, cooking books, travel, fashion, literally everything. Goop first started as a lifestyle brand, but slowly evolved into wellness as Gwyneth became weirdly, weirdly obsessed with the whole detoxing thing, stating that burning your bra is a cleansing ritual, publishing a guide to your own personal spirit animal, along with being able to buy your own spirit animal inspired ring for $2,400 and so much more. Essentially, Gwyneth Paltrow has now created a brand where she sells the idea of wellness and detoxing and just basically living your best and authentic, most healthy life. And the only way to achieve that is to buy her products. And you'd think by now that people would kind of be smart enough to know when things are scams or not real, but you'd be surprised because Goop has gotten so big to the point where, yes, they're worth literal millions and millions of dollars. But at one point, Goop even had like their own Netflix documentary thing where Netflix took a deep dive closer look into the Goop 
factory laboratory where all the wellness detoxifying jade egg magic happens. These episodes including Gwyneth and her team taking what they call healing trips where they lie on the floor and cry, hug each other, as well as doing ice baths and so many other interesting rituals. There's so much more I could bring up in the Goop documentary but I'm not going to because I can literally just get straight up age restricted because it's just that uncomfy. Apart from Goop and Gwyneth's wellness image and brand, Gwyneth Paltrow has also been known for these past, you know, few years as being someone who is also a health freak, trying all types of diets, all types of different spiritual practices, literally anything that is remotely, you you name any practice, she's tried it. I feel like right now I could make something up, you know, and somehow she would do that. And I know that somehow she has already tried it. Like for example, um, like uh, let's say like she tried detoxing by trying only baby food. Oh wait, she literally did that. Apart from Gwyneth trying all these crazy things to detox and I don't know, supposedly align her chakras or whatever. Most recently, a TikTok of Gwyneth Paltrow on a wellness podcast went completely viral on TikTok of her talking about her daily routine for wellness. And let's just say people were not happy about it and honestly i agree <laughs> this woman is making millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of people's money of people's dollars convincing them to do what she is doing even though she is not qualified to be giving any sort of advice for anything at all <laughs> She's not a dietitian. She's not a therapist. She's not qualified to be doing any of this. Yet people eat up these products like crazy. And I'm so glad, I'm so glad that TikTok is finally calling her out on all of it. A social media account on TikTok by the name of Dear Media released a 32 second clip of an interview with Gwyneth Paltrow. The clip got a million views as well as another clip that went even more viral with 3.2 million views of this interviewer just asking Gwyneth, you know, all about her wellness and how she stays so well, you know, and how she stays so goopy, you know? This one is called hashtag Gwyneth Paltrow shares her daily wellness routine on the art of being well. Listen now. And as you can tell in the comments already, people are not digging the wellness vibes that Gwyneth is offering, you know, everyone. Let's go ahead and react to this clip together and see what all the hullabaloo is about. What's your wellness routine look like now? I eat dinner early in the evening. I do a nice intermittent fast. I usually eat something about 12. Mm -hmm. um, and in the morning, I'll have some things that won't spike my blood sugar, right? So I, I have coffee, but I really like soup for lunch. Girl, bye. Already I'm over it. <laughs> Girly pop. Coffee is not a meal. Coffee is not a meal. Um, I have bone broth for lunch a lot of the days. I personally actually don't have anything against, you know, people eating a particular way or wanting to fast or whatever. Do whatever you want as long as you have run it by your doctor. If you are well educated with what you're doing, if you have worked with a dietitian, if you're doing whatever you're doing sustainably for your body and healthily, go ahead and do it, right? However, all of this stuff that Gwyneth has said that she does literally sounds like not normal eating <laughs> at all. I don't know if she has any history of like blood sugar instabilities. I don't see why anyone would have to incorporate that in their diet if that's not a current problem, but okay. Try to do one hour of movement. So I'll either take a walk or I'll do Pilates or I'll do my Tracy Anderson. Okay, movement. Obviously, that's cool. Everyone should be getting at least some sort of movement if you can every single day to just lift your guys' spirits up, to feel better, and to just get your body doing something other than just laying in bed and watching TikTok. Anyways, however, 
your body needs energy to do literally anything like thinking walking taking out your dog your body needs energy and where you get that energy is food and i think we all have the common sense to know that just having coffee and bone broth especially after a fast probably isn't the best decision you can easily wear yourself out for those of you who don't know who Tracy Anderson is, which is who Gwyneth Paltrow mentioned in her TikTok video, Tracy Anderson is a celebrity fitness trainer and she's known for the Tracy Anderson method, which is heavily focused on traditional cardio exercises such as running in place, jumping jacks, so that you can constantly work different muscle groups, which is kind of worrisome, especially when someone is just running on pure liquids. That can definitely lead to possible burnout. It's definitely not fun. And then I get in the sauna I dry brush and I get in the sauna so I do my infrared sauna for 30 minutes and then for dinner I try to eat you know according to paleo so lots of vegetables it's really important for me to support my detox like what are you trying to detox from air top comment on this video almond mom final boss <laughs> this comment has 64 thousand likes second comment is this why she looks so aged which this is a comment I see a lot about Gwyneth and um She's 50 years old. If you asked me, she looks very, very good for 50. And I know so many people don't want to admit that because if you admit that she looks good, it's almost like admitting that what she's doing is working. And like, that is like proof that all 50 year olds should be doing that to look good like she does. No, those are completely different. Please remember, two things can be true at once. She does look really good for her age. Health-wise, I will never know whether she is healthy or not. But can we say that her habits of wellness are good? Absolutely not. What is she detoxing? The bone broth? Literally what I said. This is 90s children's trauma in a nutshell. Honestly, the whole almond mom comments triggers me because all I can think about is Gigi and Bella's mom. How are you? I'm feeling really weak. I'm just like half of almond. I have a couple of almonds. Chew them really well because your, your stomach is yeah, not... Yeah. Who do you guys think would win in a fight? Gwyneth Paltrow or Bella and Hadid's mom? <laughs> You guys let me know down in the comments below. So this is the other clip of Gwyneth on this interview. As we're recording this right now, you have a little IV, so which is so on brand for both of us. We pod an IV at the same time. I'm Good really embarrassing myself right here. <laughs> People want to ask about IVs. I love an IV. I'm an early IV adopter. Glutathione, I, I love to have in an IV. Kind of a random, more fringy one. Phosphatidylcholine, that's my favorite IV when I can find them. They're quite hard to find. So she's talking about how she loves IVs with glutathione in it, as well as phosphatidylcholine. Can't really say that that well. But glutathione is an antioxidant in plants and animals and fungi, and it's capable of preventing damage to important cellular components caused by sources such as reactive oxygen species, free radicals, lipid peroxide, heavy metals, and all of that good stuff. And phosphatidylcholine is a chemical that is found naturally within the cells of our body, which helps with metabolic health and makes neurotransmitters that mostly play a big role in memory. Now, Gwyneth, as a rich person, of course gets IVs to get these things shot right directly into her bloodstream. These two compounds can be found in, you guessed it, Food, phosphatidylcholine, if I'm saying that correctly, can be found in soybeans, eggs, chicken, milk, fish, cruciferous vegetables, such as broccoli, and so much more. You don't need an IV to obtain that. And glutathione can be found in spinach, avocados, asparagus, and okra, which are all amazing foods that you can incorporate easily into your diet and won't do you any damage and if anything are considered really good foods to eat. It's kind of crazy actually because someone commented, this is so dystopian and bizarre, literally like an episode of Black Mirror, which honestly they're not lying because medically IVs, especially with like vitamins or you know, just normal IVs are used to hydrate patients who cannot take water orally. It also helps patients drain fluid fluids. It is meant to replenish and help the patient fight exhaustion or extreme sickness when their immune system is literally like going haywire. It is so crazy to me that rich people just kind of do vitamin IVs for fun. <laughs> 
that's that's crazy to me and again if you can afford it i'm not against it who cares however i will say it's very weird very dystopian and honestly it's gonna create a whole ozempic thing all over again where people who have actual illnesses and diseases like actual diagnosed diabetes and stuff diagnosed problems cannot get access to their own medicine because of rich people buying it out someone comments there is a liquid vitamin shortage right now for people who need vials to be adding to their tpn iv because of chronic nutritional issues literally see it's already starting <laughs> I was coming here to say that I'm a pharmacy tech at a hospital and we can't do TPNs with MVI or banana bags because we don't have any MVI. It's bad. First Ozempic, now this. Can rich people just leave us alone? <laughs> Can you guys just leave us alone? Someone said, wow, you must be so stressed from flying on her private jet. Honestly, they ain't lying. What what do rich people have to be stressed about? Paying taxes? Like, they don't even do that anyways. Like, bye. And what's crazy is you can literally get these vitamins and benefits from just eating the foods I listed earlier. But uh, why would you do that? That's for poor people. Duh. Something that really gets me is the way that people in different classes approach wellness. For people in the lower class, wellness is a privilege wellness is not accessible but wellness for those who are in higher classes it's a lifestyle and it makes me really sad because i know there are so many people around the world suffering again for example people with diabetes yet all these out of touch celebrities such as the kardashians are buying out drugs that are meant for diabetics simply because they want to look good for the met gala i know in the 90s there was also a massive craze of everyone being like a size zero also going on these like crazy crash diets i know in the 90s there were so many famous celebrities who are also promoting these crazy diets just to look good on like a red carpet and that's why there was that comment earlier that said every 90s kid trauma coming back to life coming back to haunt them but there was also so many dark things in the 90s that so many people went through i mean we literally see like famous children stars from the 90s grow up to come to be unstable which is always so sad to me to see but also regular schmegular people were also deeply affected by the negative stuff that was going around in the 90s and even though it's very sad i am happy that we have platforms such as youtube and tiktok where the teenagers and kids who grew up in the 90s are now coming out and talking about their experiences with diet culture especially a massive shared experience which was diet culture the diet culture at the time was awful and this is where the term almond mom comes from if you're not familiar with what i'm talking about let's do a quick deep dive into the almond mom trope and why everyone's calling gwyneth paltrow the ultimate final boss almond mom the term almond mom was coined through a variety of viral videos and topics that were being discussed online at the time but i would say one of the biggest factors in coining the term almond mom was definitely yolanda hadid unfortunately when supermodel Gigi hadid was 17 she called her mom because she wasn't feeling well i'm feeling really weak Gigi told yolanda i had like half an almond yolanda told Gigi in response to have a couple of almonds and chew them really well even though yolanda hadid is not the first so-called almond mom the now 10 year old video gives clarity to a framework that many girls and women grew up with. In the world of an almond mom, food does not exist. Everything is diet and exercise. If you're hungry, just drink water, you know, all of that stuff. And basically these moms implementing that belief system, that toxic belief system, onto their young children. On TikTok, hashtag almond mom has over 189 million views with creators spoofing the values of the almond mom while being frank about what it's like to be raised by someone who worships the, the ideal of thinness. An almond mom is a mom who is overbearing about what the child eats. 
She's obsessed with food and diet culture. If her child says that they are hungry, she responds with, are you really, really hungry? Or are you just bored? The almond mom sets out Halloween candy just to slap away the child's hand for grabbing some because it's just for decor. A TikTok user by the name of Bender who has over 143,000 followers on TikTok was surprised by the success of her videos that have everything to do with the almond mom. I didn't know so many people were dealing with this and could relate. In her videos, Bender purposely takes the almond mom stereotypes to their extremes in hopes that others will realize how absurd the behavior really is. I have seen other TikTok videos of people of like young people filming their mom doing almond mom things such as cutting a single slice of pizza into like 15 different pieces and only eating one. I also saw a TikTok the other day of this one almond mom who was like death staring at her daughter because her daughter ordered pasta at lunch and honestly that is so sad <laughs> and I don't know it was really sad to see and all the young people who are recording their almond moms like doing these things and and just sharing their experiences of their almond moms making them feel you know a certain way talk about how from a very very young age they just felt very unworthy and unloved and became obsessed with like diet culture and exercise and food from a very young age and because of that that has had horrible repercussions on their mental health and their relationship with food as adults which is always so ironic hearing because the whole intent and purpose behind a lot of these parents who want to get their child in shape or healthy is that right to get their child healthy and in shape although the intention isn't malicious the way they go about it very often is and in turn can create the opposite desired outcome which can have a lasting effect on the child who later on grows into an adult who doesn't even want to try to be healthy. I know I've talked about this before in other videos but I myself have had plenty of issues with my relationship with food. Thankfully, I have gotten so much help from so many different people and I am in a place right now where I'm probably the healthiest I have ever been in my life. And although I was not raised by an almond mom, I was raised in the Tumblr era days where um, let's just say it was popular to look a certain way. If you are someone who knows what I'm talking about, you are brave and we deserve compensation <laughs> for what we went through. And it really affected me and it got me to a point where I didn't even want to try being healthy. What was the point? What was the point of having a good relationship with food? What was the point of having a good relationship with my body? I wanted to completely give up on myself and it led me down to a place where I was super, super unhappy and just the mere thought of healing my relationship with like food and body image was so draining and exhausting but it came to a point where i was just like okay i need to change and i sought help from all types of professionals and thankfully i am super educated on food now i recently got a health panel done and everything came out perfectly fine which is a result that i had not had within like the last six years i'm someone who deals with invisible illness which means that I have chronic illness, but it's a condition in which a lot of people would usually look at me and be like, but you don't look sick. But in reality, I actually really, really am. I'm very, very sick. Help me. <laughs> yeah, for the longest time, I suffered with a specific chronic invisible illness. Of course, I still have it, but I have been able to work with amazing people to help me put that to rest and maintain it to the point where I am now living a very healthy life. I used to have severe, severe inflammation and these flare-ups where my body just did not want to cooperate with me. And guys, it was so hard. It was so hard to get to where I am now, but it was so worth it. But it was so worth it getting help, being able to have a good relationship with food and love myself. You cannot hate your way into a better body. You cannot hate your way into health. You cannot loathe yourself into becoming better. That's not how it works. Take it from me as someone who thought that was the answer for the longest time, it's really not. And what makes me more sad is I understand people who are attracted to stuff such as Goop or Gwyneth Paltrow, these crazy diets and everything, because unfortunately um, where I live, you know, in the US, a lot of our food is filled with poison and toxins and a lot of doctors can't be trusted and it just feels like a never-ending losing game. But I promise you, it's not. I hate 
that there are people like Gwyneth Paltrow who take advantage of people who are chronically ill and are desperate to find answers to their chronic illness. I really wish that I had my sister Penny on right now because she is someone who also deals with even stronger, severe, invisible illness um, than me. God bless her soul. Speaking of which, me and my sister are going to make a podcast soon together. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be up on her channel. And we actually are going to have an episode talking about chronic illness and everything that we have dealt with. And it'll definitely be interesting, but since she's not here right now, I'll kind of tell you guys what she has told me because we've had plenty of conversations about just being chronically ill and how it's a very different life that we have than people who are not chronically and visibly ill. Something that we've talked about is it takes so much time and money that it's so draining and discouraging. Being sick here, being sick here in the US, unfortunately for a lot of people is like a death sentence because there just isn't enough care, there isn't enough education, and a lot of people don't have enough money to have their health be a priority. So for people like me and my sister, once we do get money, it's kind of like, okay, you're desperate and you're like, okay, what what can I go, what can I look at right now? I need, I need to find the cure. And you really do get that desperate because it's it's awful living with chronic illness. And and I'm sure that there are some of my followers watching who also deal with invisible illness or chronic illness who know exactly what I'm talking about. And my heart goes out to you fully. You know what it's like to be like, I'm just so tired of having chronic migraines. I'm tired of always feeling inflamed. I'm tired of my stomach always hurting. I'm tired of my optic nerves are always hurting. I just want to feel good for once. And you start to turn to all types of crazy things that people are recommending you to find that cure and it takes a toll on you mentally and physically because you just feel so hopeless and what makes me so sad is corporations like goop and other fake wellness brands purposely reach out to people who are looking to heal themselves with things that just don't work and overprice it knowing damn well that people who do suffer with chronic illness are willing to give all of their money away for a cure i just can't stand that i think it's so scummy and i think it's so crappy and it really hurts my heart literally because i'm chronically ill my biggest advice to you as someone who has actually tried yes i've actually tried some of the things that gwyneth paltrow has tried not through goop but just in general, I've tried all types of medicines and healings and all this other type of stuff because I was just so desperate to cure my chronic illness. I've tried crazy diets and everything. I just wanna really give you hope and tell you, do not listen to the people who do not have chronic illnesses, who do not know what you're going through. Do not listen to them. Whether it's an almond mom or Gwyneth Paltrow, the only thing Gwyneth Paltrow is selling you is unattainable lifestyle that will most likely get you nowhere but just in debt. And if you have an almond mom or have experienced almond mom tendencies, don't listen to them either. <laughs> because food is good and food is nourishing. Food is your friend. Food can help you. Water is good. Water can help you. And yes, bone broth is good as well and getting your daily exercise in every single day if you can is also good but at the end of the day you cannot punish your body into becoming better especially as someone with chronic illness the way i had to view it is my body is begging me to just love it and to cherish it and to just embrace it and i cannot heal it or make it better by punishing it and neither can you before i end this video i do want to say for everyone who's watching who has dealt with like an almond mom or invisible illness i just want to say that you are so loved and you are seen and your illness is real your struggles are real you're not exaggerating you're not crazy you don't feel that way for attention you are so special just the way you are your body loves you and your body also needs your love back. Your mind needs you and you also need your mind. It is possible to become best friends with yourself. The journey is very hard and if you have no one in your life that believes that you can do that, I am here right now telling you that I believe in you. It's possible and you are so much stronger than you think. All right guys, that is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys made it to the end of this video, make sure to comment down a duck emoji down below. Send 
I know that you guys watched the entire thing. Make sure to follow me on Instagram where I post beauty, where I post beauty videos and just kind of spam on my story. If you guys want to see more random content, then follow me on TikTok. And remember to check out my podcast, the Salem Tovar podcast on literally every platform where I repost audio versions of these videos onto there. So you guys can take it anywhere you want, to the gym, to the laundromat, or to get an IV. I wanted to make a video separately on Gwyneth Paltrow and separately on the Almond Moms, you know, whole thing. However, they just kind of clashed together. So I decided to mix both topics. And I'm glad I did because it definitely makes sense and everything worked out. And remember, when you go into the real world, love one another, be merciful unto one another, be kind to one another, and make today count, do something that you love, play Roblox, eat a good balancing meal, or snuggle with your pet. Comment down below what your guys' opinion is on all of this, on all of this madness. I would love to hear you guys' thoughts, but you guys know the drill. Keep it cute, keep it cordial, keep it clean in the comments. I'm not afraid to block. What should I talk about in my next video? Let me know. All right, that is it. I'm so tired. I'm gonna go take a nappy nap and drink some water, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.